you know, it's heating up. Off season for the NFL is is. I mean, I know it was hot before, but I think we had we had a discussion offline that you know a lot of the teams that you want to talk about this week are you know have a lot to do still. And uh, so we're going to roll right into it. Um, James, you're going to take us through the NFC North and the offseason needs for these teams. I know, like I said, I know a lot of has already happened, but take it away. All right, man. NFC North, like Trayden said, Trayden is actually a week ahead because last week he did the NFC and just out of his ass to the AFC. So good for him. <laughs> uh, we're going to start with the Green Bay Packers, though. They finished 13-3, and made it pretty far with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, last season, they finished first in offense and ninth in defense. They re-signed Aaron Jones in the offseason, but they lost center Corey Lindsley. That's a huge loss right there. Currently, they have 2.7 million cap space. Tyler, how do they? what do they need to fix what they got going on, and how do they fix it? Uh, yeah, Screen Bay Packers team, uh, obviously one of the better teams in the NFC. I, see, I still think will be uh, going into next season. Um I think a few you know tweaks here and there is what they need to shore up. I think one of those spots is a uh, cornerback. I think on the defensive side, need to kind of tweak a few things. Uh, so let's look, let's look for in, in a free agency, obviously draft isn't going to cut it. So uh, looking to free agency, looking at some uh, top, top cornerbacks that are out there. Uh, Steven Nelson of the Pittsburgh uh, uh, Steelers, I think is a good option for them. Uh, so I think on the, on the cornerback side, sh- uh, sh- showing off that pass defense, I think is, is a, is a big part for the uh, Packers moving forward. You sound very well prepared for this segment this week. I'm so proud trying, of you. Trying, trying. <laughs> you didn't mess up a name. That was very, yes. that was really well said. Thank, Thank you. you. Alec, <laughs> Thank what do you got? <laughs> um, I mean, obviously the big problem with the Packers is they have Devonte Adams and nobody else. But I don't really think it on the offensive side, you know, he need, Aaron Rodgers needs a second wide receiver. I don't really see how they're going to go by getting a second star. Um, so I'm actually not going to go that direction. I'm going to go kind of on the other side of the ball. You just said they were first in offense. Um, so ninth in defense. Um, I think a draft prospect for them to look at is Aleem McNeil. Uh, you know, they, they had a decent defensive um, showing last season. They need to get after the quarterback a little bit more. Um, I think that he can definitely do that. Um, you know, they performed better than they did in 2019. They want to keep that rolling. Um, the Packers are still in the heat of a, you know, a Super Bowl run here. So showing up that defensive line, uh, I think, can help push them over the edge. I think I read somewhere that Aaron Rodgers wants to play like three or four more years. So they're going to be on the Super Bowl run for three or four more years. As long as Aaron Rodgers plays for the Packers, they're going for the Super Bowl. Trading, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, this was tough. Um, I mean, I know that I got prepared for it last week, but that was before they lost their center in Lindsley. I think that that's a big issue. But I had originally had linebacker uh, that they, they could they could shore up their defensive and on the linebacker side. I lo- I like KJ Wright in that spot, but I mean, I that <laughs> he seems like he's actually interested in going to the Cowboys. So who knows what how that if that's gonna um, pan out. I did also have. Um, defensive tackle and Dominican Sue, but he signed resigned with the Buccaneers, like I think last week. So again, this is why it's tough because things change week by week. Sorry, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, mean, I, I think, I, I think that the offensive side, I mean, they, they, they have Aaron Jones back, which is huge. Um, but I think that they have to shore up the, the defensive side. And I think linebacker is the, is the key is the missing piece there. I agree 110%. I also went with linebacker because they did cut to the starting linebacker, Christian Kirksey, for financial reasons. So right now they have nobody in that linebacker spot. Um, I think they go with somebody kind of cheap. He played for Trayden's favorite team, the Cleveland Browns, and that's B.J. Goodson. He's a pretty reliable linebacker, good against the run, good against the pass. Nothing spectacular, though. He's average. But I think they do draft the linebacker somewhere in those middle rounds that he can mentor, and he's a good little stopgap for the time being. So I think they do fix their defense, and I think they go linebacker with B.J. Goodson. He's going to cost you like maybe two mil a year. So there it is right there. That, that works for you. Moving on to the second team, this was very surprising, but it's the Chicago Bears. They finished 8-8. Eight and eight. They were 20th in offense because Mitch Trubisky sucks and 5th in defense. They now have their QB1 in Andy Dalton, which is weird to say after all these years, but Andy Dalton's a QB1 once again. They re-signed Allen Robinson to a huge deal, and that's massive because he's one of the best wide receivers in the game by far. They currently have about $2.1 million in cap space. Alex, what do they need and how do they fix it? Oh, the Bears. God damn it. Just what a struggle <laughs> they are. 
Yeah, Andy Dalton's QB1. Um, he's no spring chicken. Um, he's definitely not a mobile quarterback. Um, if they want him to succeed, they need to shore up their offensive line. Um, if Andy Dalton's running around, the Bears are running to the cellar of this division. But great <laughs> analogy. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> well done. Uh, so draft pick, um, Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC. Um, he can slot in right away and play on that offensive line. Um, you know, they they have enough firepower on offense if they can keep Andy Dalton from getting smushed all the time. Um, obviously, we saw how poorly he performed in Dallas last year when he was running for his life. Uh, not that Andy Dalton can run that well anymore, but um, so that's that's who I got as a draft pick for the Bears. Show up that offensive line. You're very draft oriented this episode. It's crazy. Trey, yeah. what do you got? It's tough. Yeah. Again, this is a tough one. I mean, I, I last week I, I like you said, I already had it all set up, and I thought they needed a quarterback. That was before they signed Andy Dalton, which I guess was kind of unsurprising. But it seems like it's a one year deal. I had Cam Newton slated in there potentially. Um, you know, give him another shot, but. I think I think either way, this team is not going to do that well, and I think that they need to kind of focus on the future. Um, but I do like the offense, so I think I think the offensive line needs to get built out, and I think you got to go to the draft. And I like uh, Christian Darrisaw from Virginia Tech, and that they got to rebuild. Um, I, I think that they're a team that's not ready to win now. They, they're not going to beat the Packers. I mean, it's just that's that's it. And and if you can't, the Packers are kind of one of those benchmark teams, right? And and I just don't think that they're even close. Um, yeah, they got second. And that's because I think everyone under them is not that great either. Um, so I I think that they need to start building, you know, establishing the offense, the offensive line, and, and building out that way. I like it, uh, Tyler. Yeah, I actually agree with Traden. I, I I think the Bears, you know, I think they need to kind of build their future. Um, their their draft position isn't great either. In twentieth, I'm obviously you can get a pretty solid guy at twenty, but um, you know, I, for me, it's, I don't know if it's any specific need. I think obviously on the offensive side, they need a lot more help on the defensive side. As you mentioned, the top five defense last season, uh, shoring up that defensive side, building up the offensive, what, whatever best offensive players available to draft at 20, whatever that may be. I think you draft him, build around that guy, um, and, and, and move forward. But the, the bears are a tough one as kind of absolute to, I mean, just can't really seem to get it all together. You know, we'll see if any Dalton's even the answer. I don't, I don't know if he's the answer to be honest with you. Um, but, but, but we'll see how he does in uh, Chicago. And uh, I, for, I, for me, I think it, it, it's, it's patient time for the bears. Let's kind of see, you know, build, build the future and see what, you know, the next few, how, how the next few years uh, play out for them. So I agree with you guys kind of with the offensive line, I actually went with tight end, uh, Tight end is a kind of a blocker, but also a pass catcher. So it's going to help your offense either way. Um, I think they go ahead and sign Trey Burton. Trey Burton is pretty good. He played for the Colts last season. He's a great blocker and a great receiver. He actually got it as a 20th t- best tight end in the league last year out of 73 tight ends, which is better, better than most people. Their current tight end, Cole Komet, was terrible. I understand it was his rookie season, but still, man, he was not cutting it either way. Um, he gets a play back in Chicago with a competent QB this time. It's not Mitch Trubisky. It's Andy Dalton, which is a little bit better, but not much. The fact of the matter is Andy Dalton had a couple of Pro Bowl years when he was in Cincinnati. Mitch Trubisky was just poop. Um, he's coming in at 2 to $3 million per year, so he's definitely signable. I say bring back Trey Burton. Give the Chicago Bears a chance. With a defense that's top five, you have a chance of kind of taking a wild card potentially. Moving on to the second team or the third team in this division, that is the Minnesota Vikings coming in at seven and nine. I honestly think they were the biggest disappointment last season. They had so much hype. They had a great roster, supposedly a great defense, but that fell flat. They were seventh in offense and 27th in defense. And Mike Zimmer is a defensive head coach. Weird. They relied heavily on Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, and Justin Jefferson, which is a solid nucleus right there. In the offseason, they signed a pretty high profile cornerback, Patrick Peterson. He's older, not what he used to be. But back in the day, that guy was a lockdown corner, regarded as one of the best in the league. They also signed Mackenzie Alexander. They lost their best safety in Anthony Harris and lost tackle Riley Reef. They have seven million cap space right now. So, Trade, what do they need and how do they fix it? Um, I have I have a I have a good one. Um, I think that you shore up the 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 D line, um, and Ryan Kerrigan needs to be signed. 
four-time pro bowler, very resilient, missing no games over an eight-season span, found his way on the football team's all-time sack list. Sign this guy, please, and thank you. Done. How much does it cost? Uh, that I don't know, but it's a it's, <laughs> it's, it's a must it's a must sign if you're gonna if you're trying to compete. Uh, Tyler, what do you got? <laughs> uh, safety so again to kind of uh, defensive side of the ball. Um, a, c- a couple of uh, free, free agents on the market: uh, Malik Hooker out of the from the Colts and uh, Trey Boston from uh, the Panthers. Uh, a couple guys out there that uh, can be signed, and I think uh, will kind of help this. Uh, team succeed again it's kind of one of those teams i think as long as uh cousins around there running around the, the, the quarterback spot um i don't know how good this team's gonna be so uh do what you can see what happens you act like cousins was the reason why this team sucked they were seventh in offense mm-hmm. they're not bad in offense it was a defense this year alex what you got so i agree <clears throat> i agree with trading their defensive line had a huge drop off from 2019 to 2020 um, I think they bring back a Vikings legend. I don't know if legend's the right word, but Everson Griffin uh, played for the Vikings for a really long time. They can bring him back as a, a vet. He won't cost a ton of money, um, but he'll be enough to kind of give them at least a name on that defensive line. You know, he's 33 years old, so he's definitely, you know, getting up there, but he can still bring it enough um, and really anything that that they have. Uh, well, anything that they, he's better than anything they've got now, anyway. So, uh, Everson Griffin coming back to Minnesota. That's I took the words right out of my mouth. I, he was on my list. The Vikings will get an edge rusher. They were 28th out of 32 in sack percentage. I had a list of people. I had Davion Clowney, I had Melvin Ingram. They both, all of them, fit under that seven million dollar cap threshold, and they need any help that they can get. They need sacks, and they need it now. Last but not least, we're moving to the sellers, the bottom dwellers of the league and that's the Detroit Lions. They're going to suck so much next year. It's ridiculous. Coming in at five and 11 from last season, they pretty much have a bit new team to fight everybody. They're 15th in offense and 32nd out of 32nd in defense. They lost their best offensive stars. They lost Kenny Galladay. They lost Marvin Jones Jr. Matt Stafford is now Ram. Congratulations, Rams fans. It's basically like a whole new team. Tyler, what do they need and how they fix it? Yeah, so you got you got the draft, so you start there, uh, seventh overall pick. Um, you can go a lot of different directions, as you said. It's, the team needs a lot. Uh, for me, what I, I like uh, Jamar Chase out of LSU. Alex, I believe you mentioned this guy last week on the podcast. Uh, you know, LSU has pumped out a lot of good wide receivers in the NFL the last few years. Um, I think he's a solid option. Obviously, Jared Goff. Um, maybe we'll miss you. Maybe we won't. Probably won't. Um, but. Uh, it'll be an interesting year for the Lions, uh, probably a few years of, of pretty bad football, but got to start somewhere. I think where they're positioned, I think Lamar Chase is one of their best options. Jamar Chase. Uh, moved on. Alex, what do you think? So close, Tyler. <laughs> um, <Almost had> it. <laughs> yeah, we, I know their defense is terrible and they're not going to fix that anytime soon. Um, and I, I really hate agreeing with Tyler. But yeah, any of those big, the pick number seven, any of those big three wide receivers that are still available. So Jamar Chase, uh, Devontae Smith, or Jalen Waddell, um, any of those that are available. Jared Goff is still young. He can be a good quarterback in this league. Um, pair him with a young wide receiver, something to build upon. Um, you know, they've got a good running back in DeAndre uh, Swift. The defense is going to take some work. But with that seven overall pick, I think you need to get a star wide receiver after losing Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones Jr. Trading. Uh, they, they're, they, they said it. I mean, that that's pretty much it. I mean, um, Anthony Lynn's going to be tasked with helping golf, you know, kind of find his way through the season and golf's not gonna be able to do it without some high quality pass catchers. Um, I like Devonte Smith. Uh, or any of those, any of those names that you guys pick, but I think you have to, I think you have to put some, some skilled, some athletic, um, you know, re- pass catchers, you know, beside Goff, if, if they're going to, if, if a, they're going to see if he, if he's going to be their quarterback for the long term, and to give, to give them even a shot offensively. I agree. Tyler pick number seven is perfectly, perfectly acceptable to get a, Wide receiver, not pick number five, pick number seven. <laughs> gotcha. Devontae Smith is what I'm going with. I mean, honestly, this like everybody said, this team's going to suck. Got to make it exciting. Got to fill the stands. 
So who better to get than the Heisman Trophy winner? The dude had 1,800 yards last season and 23 touchdowns. He's explosive. He's coming in at 170 pounds, super, super light. I think I was 170 pounds in fourth grade. So he needs to put on some weight. But the thing is, he's, he's a good wide receiver. And, uh, yeah, they got to fill seats. You got to make it watchable. So pick up Devontae Smith. And that is my segment. I love it. That was that, that was fun. James, how many uh, divisions do we still have? Uh, this will be it because we're going to the draft next week. Oh, we're going to the draft. Yeah, you. We, we can you, only fix some of the teams. That. Yeah, dude. <laughs> the entire other screwed. half, like the East and the South, nah. nah. <laughs> Who <laughs> Too cares? far away. Who cares? No, um, you know, you're, I'm excited for your draft uh, segments. I think those are going to be a, that's going to be a fun month to, to discuss. Um, but Hey, thank you for taking us through that. That was fun. 